As some of you may know, I love reading archive papers. I spend a lot of time trying to find really good papers that I can feature on Twitter and LinkedIn. And sometimes we even do deep dives on interesting papers here on YouTube. And one tool I use a lot is obviously the main archive website. So I usually spend a lot of time on these two categories here under computer science. So computational language, that's where you would find all the papers on LLMs. And those are the papers that I'm mostly talking about, like agents, rack systems, and so on. So one frustration with archive is that when you click on papers, it gives you a nice abstract, but it doesn't give you any way on how to interact with the authors. So here are the authors of this particular paper. You can view the PDF. You even have this HTML version of it, but it doesn't work so great. But there's no way to interact with the researchers or the authors of the paper. Sometimes you may have questions that come up for a specific paper that you were reading or maybe something that was not clear or an experimental result and you may want feedback on that. You want to interact with others. I think that's in general is good for research and science more broadly. And so there's not a lot of great solutions for this. And I came across this new website that's based on all the archive papers where the authors well, some of the authors of these papers are hanging out and actually having conversations and discussions with readers and other researchers. In this video, we're going to look at that tool and how you can use it and why it's useful. I have shifted over to AlphaChive. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And this website features all these papers in addition to discussions and comments that researchers are having about some of these papers. I think this is a very useful tool because if you have a question about an experimental result of a paper or some claim, more than likely someone else has the same question. And in order for you to get answers directly from authors or maybe even other researchers, this is the place where you would find that. Even though you may not be doing like research as a profession, it's still useful if you're a developer or AI engineer that wants to stay up to date with what's going on in the field. So right off the bat, we have this feature papers. We get a lot of questions about what are the papers that are interesting and so on. I think the papers that could be interesting are also papers that are heavily discussed because maybe they have some very strong claim and folks want to know where are the claims coming from. If you come from the world of Twitter, also known as X now, well, there's a lot of discussion around papers, but it's quite disorganized. It made sense to have a dedicated platform where you can ask questions about papers, but I think most of that conversation happens on X and in some discords. So it's really good to have a platform where you can directly interact with these authors. All right. So the first thing here, you see the featured papers. So you can click on one of these papers. So for instance, I did a video on this on the AI scientist. So I can imagine there was a lot of questions about this because the authors really made big claims about what the agent can do. This agent apparently can execute experiments, visualize results, and even generate the papers and later review the paper as well. That being said, I think something like this will obviously raise a lot of skepticism and so having tools like this where you can directly interact with authors or maybe interact with other researchers or maybe something that was confusing or you need further explanation on, this is the platform that you will be using. I think this is a very good platform. And what I like about this is that if you are the author of this paper, you can claim the authorship. That's really powerful because that is the way you verify whether you are the right author for the paper. You can see all the discussion here under comments. So this one says, I would like to know whether the AI scientists can research more general scientific areas such as physics, chemistry, or biology. That's a really good question. And you can see how many upvotes it has. So I'm going to upvote this because I already created an account. You need an account to be able to make comments and so on. And so here we have these responses. Say so first, you need to design an automated pipeline for research in more general scientific areas. So I'm assuming this is not the author, but it's maybe another researcher. Indeed, one exciting foray into the fields, into other fields could be simulation-based experiments that can be done in, in silico. And we have many other types of questions and people are interacting with it. So the cool thing is that you can upvote questions that way you don't see a lot of like noise, but you see questions that might be interesting for the larger community. But it's good to have this because you can share ideas, you can share maybe some concerns that you have about the paper that other researchers may have as well, platform to discover insights and 
find out more information about specific papers that you might be interested in. The next thing you can do here is you can bookmark papers. So if you go to the AI scientist here, I can bookmark this. You can see bookmark here. So I go to here and then you can see it's added here as part of my bookmarks. This could be improved like by categories and so on, but still I think it's a first good version of this tool. You have your activity log if you're asking questions and you're receiving some notes. This is really nice. Then you have these claim papers of maybe you have author papers. I have author papers, but I have not claimed them yet. But anyways, you can do that as well if you're an author of a paper. You can also go to explore if you want to explore other papers that are being heavily discussed in the community. So you can see here it has a ranking and the current ranking of the paper is based on the recent comment activity. So these are the ones that have a lot of activity or recent comment activity. And so that's how they are rating these. And you can always sort them out, but I think this is nice because I think this is a good way to filter out what are interesting papers that the community is discussing. And so you can do your own research around that. You can ask questions. You can look at what others are saying. Other researchers are also adding their insights into this. So I think as a learning platform, it's also very good. So if I click on this dash and paper here, this one was more about agentic workflows. You will see a lot of comments on this one. Notice this particular comment was made 22 days ago, and it's about specific section and so on to maybe explain it a bit more. And if there are potential challenges or the limitations in determining what information should be stored in a member memory bank for such scenarios. There are some responses here and you can see here this one has a label. So apparently this is an author of the paper as you can see it matches here and directly this author is responding. This is very cool right because we are getting direct comments from the authors on any question that you may have. All right, and they have many other questions that you can explore. And it also has this rating. So let's look at Sophia as an example here. Sophia has been very active on the platform, asking a lot of questions and maybe responding as well. And based on that, she has received an alpha chive score. So this is like a little motivation here for being active on the platform. But in the end, it shouldn't be about scoring points because people can abuse that. It should be more about the quality of conversations or discussions that you're starting because this is where a lot of the other platforms really fail like Twitter or Reddit or even like Hacker News, there's no way to really control the discussion and to surface important comments and discussions. And I think having a dedicated platform for that might actually solve this problem. Still, I think it remains to be seen whether it actually works, but I'm quite excited about this because this is something that we thought a lot about when we were building PaperSuit code. Anyways, a lot of things to sort out here. Hopefully, like users are not abusing it and it could be used in a very productive and helpful way, and it can surface and encourage good discussions for AI research papers. And it's not just about AI research papers. You can search papers on all the different categories that Archive has. So it can be other sciences like physics, it could be maths, it could be any of the sections, statistics, whatever it is. But I guess the ML community have always wanted something like this. So you will see a lot of activity in the AI research paper section. Again, you can comment. I'm not going to comment here because I have nothing to say for now, but I will probably be using this a lot and gaining more insights. You can also find more information like there is a video about this particular paper here and it's nice that there is someone that's sharing. It's actually the first author here that's sharing that. So it's really useful to find information really quickly about interesting papers. In addition to that, you can look at the comments. So the most recent comments, you can also look at that here. So there is a comment on attention is all you need two hours ago. So you can see the most recent comments or discussions. There's also talk to authors here. So there are like all the verified authors are appearing here. So you can also track that as well. So I'm not sure how useful this is, but I think it's still good to have access to it. I think this is probably the most useful section. And I like that it has these authors already connected here, which means you can directly 
ask those authors and those authors are engaging with the questions and discussions that have been started. That's pretty cool. And this ranking here, you see papers go up, papers go down, like attention is only need went up here because there were some recent questions on that. And that's good. I think you will need to figure out a better way to do the ranking because I think that's challenging. But in general, we can learn a lot from like discussion forums and so on to have a good rating. So far, I think this is good. I've found a lot of really interesting discussions recently and good papers as well that I feature in my own newsletters and my own deep dives and papers that I post on Twitter as well. This is becoming one of my main channels or sources to find interesting papers and discussions. So that'll be it for this video. I just wanted to feature this tool that I'm now starting to use a lot and I hope that you find value in it. Please leave a comment if you think this is useful or how it can be improved. I think that'll be useful for the developers of this platform. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That really helps a lot and tells us what kind of content you're interested in. I'll see you all on the next one.